Welcome back. In this video, we will have a look at the object class and how we can override some of the methods and operators of the object class. So what is the object class? If I click on or hover over the print method, you will see that the print method accepts a type of type object there. So what is this object that we see in a lot of cases? Now, if we go to the api.dart.dev web page, then we can see that the object class they define it as the base class for all Dart objects. So because the object is the root of the Dart class hierarchy, every other Dart class is a subclass of object. Now let's just look at one, what does the object class provide for us. It's got a constructor that will construct a new object. It's got some properties, hash code, runtime type. It's got some methods, no such method and to string. And it's got an operator the equals operator. Now, if we just quickly look at the hierarchy here, we can see that object of type nullable is right at the top of it. Then object is directly beneath it. And remember, we said now that object is the base class of all Dart objects, which means that any other class is a subclass of it. So if you look at this, subclasses of object will include iterable. And iterable has got list, set, and map, and all those we did. Also, we've got num, where we get our doubles and our ints. And also, as part of directly inheriting from object, will be your string class, as well as your Boolean types. So any other class that you create will directly inherit from object, even though we do not indicate that. Now that we know that, we can go and try and see if we cannot use or override some of the methods and operators of the object class. So I've created a new project in Visual Studio Code. I've created the main.dart with just the main method, and I've got a rectangle.dart file that contains the rectangle class that we did previously. So the only change you will see is that I have removed the abstract keyword there, and I've removed that abstract method called getArea. So this is a very basic rectangle class where we've got the length at the top, we've got the width at the top, both of them are private, and in the constructed, we have a required double length and a required double width. That length and width that will be passed in will be set to the length and the width that we've got as the properties of this class. Then we also have the getter and the setter methods for length, and the getter and setter methods for width. So a very basic class called a rectangle. So if I want to create a new instance of rectangle, I can just go and say var rectangle equals and say rectangle. And if I choose it there from the list, it will auto import it for me and I can indicate the length and I can also indicate the width. Let's say that's five. Now let's use this print method now. So you remember that print method, this print method accepts any type of object and that includes nullable or not nullable values. So it accepts any type of object because object is the base class of all of the other classes we create, which means that's why I can actually print out an integer or a double or a string or even my own rectangle there. But let's see what happens if I print this out. So I'm going to run this quickly and you'll see that when it prints it out, it says this is an instance of rectangle. But when I print out something like uh, a 10, for example, which is an integer, and I run it, it will actually just print out that 10 there. And I did not say something like, uh, this is an instance of a specific class. So I could, for example, print out that whole object there, print it out because it's an object of a specific type, and the print method can accept anything. It will still print out instance of rectangle. So how can I change my coding so that this printout actually gives me something that makes sense to print out? Let me just replace this again with a rectangle. And if we print it out, it says instance of rectangle, which, in, which means it's an object of type rectangle. So what we can go and do in the rectangle class, and we've seen now in the class called object, there's a method called toString. So what we can do is go and say at override, and I want to override the toString method. So if you look at the website again, you will see that the toString method returns a string representation of the object. It accepts nothing and it returns back a string. 
So if I want to override this, this is exactly what I'll need to do. I'll need to return back a string. It needs to be to string and accept absolutely nothing. So now I can have a return statement that says rectangle length and let's show the length. Maybe add a new line, say rectangle width and then let's show the width. Right, let's save this one now. So now we've got a two string method that returns back a representation of my rectangle object which is basically just a length and a width. So now if I go back to main and I run this now again you can see that it prints out those two lines and that's the same as just going and saying dot to string and it will print out exactly the same thing. So whenever you've got a class without a to string method it will print out what it previously printed out. But as soon as you override the to string method of the object class, whenever we print out an object, it will automatically run the to string method. So I can leave out the to string method there, run this again, and you will see it runs actually the to string method again. So that automatically happens when you print out an object of a class. Right, so now let's look at another thing that we can do also. And you've seen that your object class has got an operator called equals. So let's see if we can use this equal sign to check whether two objects are the same. So I can just go and print out there, print, let's create another object first. So I'm going to say a rectangle 2 equals a rectangle with a length of 10 and the width of 5. So you agree that those two are exactly the same. So I'm going to say print rectangle equal to rectangle 2. So I'm basically saying if rectangle is equal to rectangle 2, then it will be printed true there. If it's not, it's going to return back a false there. So let's run this again, and you can see both objects are exactly the same. So if we run them, you will see it says false. And that's because this equals operator actually testing for whether these two are pointing to the exact same object, which they are not. This one has got this object, and rectangle 2 is pointing to this object. Even though the values inside is the same, it's two different objects, and that's why it returns back false. Mm -hmm. So we can go and recreate this equal sign so that it does something else for me. So let's go to the rectangle class, and let's change that equals operator. Now because it's something that your object class already have, we will just go and say override. Now let's go and have a look at that operator quickly. You can see the operator returns back a boolean, and it accepts an object on the other side of the operator. So let's go back. So this operator will send back a boolean. I'm going to say this is the operator. So I'm, there's a special keyword called operator in order for you to create some operators for your class. So we're going to say bool operator with a double equal sign. And then it said we should have that object sent through and object again. Now this you can name it actually anything you want, but uh, let's just keep it at object. And then we need to return back a boolean inside. So basically what is happening now is we need to go and test to make sure that whatever object we're comparing with, that the length of the one is the same as the length of the other one, and the width of the one is the same as the width of the other one. So if we look again at this, there's two sides of this double equal sign. There's the left hand side, and there's the right hand side. So the right hand side one is the one that gets passed in. It will be this object that gets passed in. The left hand side will be the one that we're actually working with with the underscore length and the underscore width. And you can refer to that one with the this keyword. So what we can do here is to go and say, if firstly, we want to make sure that this object that was sent in is actually of type rectangle before we compare it. So I can go and say if the object that was passed in is rectangle, which means that I'm testing if the object that was passed in is of the type rectangle. Then I want to go and check every length and width to see if it's the same. So let's go and do this. If this dot length is the same as the object that was passed in's length and at the same time this dot width is the same as the object that was passed in's width. So if that is true then we want to return true. But now if this is not an object of type rectangle 
we will just go at the end and say return false. And also then if this if statement is not true, we will in any case return false at the end. So the return true there will pop it outside of this operator and return the value. But if it doesn't get to this line where it actually pops out, it will at the end get to this one where it says return false. All right, so let's check this one out again. So let's just see that again. Remember the left hand side of this operator, which is rectangle, which is that first object is basically those with this keyword. So I'm saying this dot length is the first object's length equals object that was passed in is the one on the right hand side. So I'm saying, well, that object's length. So if the one on the left's length is the same as the one on the on the right's length and the one on the left's width is the same as the one on the width on the right's width, then we know the two are exactly the same. And then we return back true. So let's see if it works. So let's run this one again. Rectangle equals rectangle two. It's true now. Changing just one of the two will make it false because then they are not the same. But now I can also test any other object there. So let's say I test out a string value of one, two, three, four. Save it and run it again. You can see it still says false. So what if we didn't want to actually compare anything else than two objects with this equal sign? Because it doesn't make sense to compare the rectangle with a 1, 2, 3, and a 4. Because rectangle is not of type string. So in order to do that, we can use a keyword in there that says covariant. By using this covariant keyword, we are allowed to actually change this object type. So just to show you something, I can also go and try and make this a rectangle there. So that I take in a rectangle. But you can see it doesn't like that. It says at the bottom it says rectangle isn't a valid override of object which means we should have object there so now using the keyword covariant i'm saying but i want to have only rectangle objects there and that's the only ones i want to have passed in there to actually use with this operator so now if i save this and i run it again you will see even in compile time it tells you that you cannot do that. The argument type string can't be assigned to the parameter type rectangle, which means I can only compare rectangles with each other and not a rectangle with anything else. Right, and then doing that covariant, it's not needed to use this one that says if the object is rectangle, because now we know it is. So we can actually remove this if statement then. We can actually remove the false value there, remove this totally, Remove the brackets, remove the if statement there, and even remove those brackets there, and just say return this thing. Because if this.length equals object.length and this.width is object.width, it will return a true or a false, and that true or false is what we want. And because we have the return statement with only one statement, we can actually replace this with a fat arrow take away the return statement there and save. So that is my operator then. I can return back checking if those two are the same and if it is it will return true. If it's not it's going to return a false. So let's see if it still works. So if I go back if I test this now against rectangle 2 and I run it it should still say the two are not the same so it's going to print out false. But if I make them the same, a 5, change that uh, 6 to a 5 back again, both are the same and it should print out true. Right, so what we've learned now is that we can override some of the methods and operators of the object class to make our class a bit more useful. So normally you would need to go and create your two string method. So maybe add that also as an addition to every single class you create to make sure that you've got the two string method there. Then one last thing, you're not only limited to creating this operator. So let's say we have something else. Let's say we want to return back a new rectangle when using the operator multiply. And when we're multiplying or using the operator on the right hand side of the multiply, we're going to have an integer value as an example. And now you can see I'm not using the add override there because the object class doesn't have a multiplication operator. But I can use multiplication operator in my class, which means I'm going to send back a new rectangle 
when I taking a rectangle object and I multiply it by a specific value. And what I then can do is to return a new rectangle object. And the length will be this dot length. Let's use the underscore there. Multiplied by the value, which we're going to use on the right hand side of the multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the length by the value and I will also multiply this dot width by that same value. And in essence, then we are creating a new rectangle object with the length multiplied by the value as well as the width multiplied by the value. And that we can do by using the multiplication operator. So let's see how this one works. If I go back to main, I can actually go and say, oh, let's say something like var, uh, let's say new rectangle equals, let's take the top rectangle and we multiply it by two. So that's the operator now. On the left hand side is what we can refer to with the, this keyword as the width and the length of that object. And the right hand side of the operator is what you pass in. And what we're passing in there is a value of type integer. And I'm going to take that value and multiply my length and my width. And let's see if this works. So the new rectangle will be the old rectangle's values multiplied by 2. Now let's print out new rectangle. And because we do have a two string method there, it will print out the length and the width for me. So let's run this quickly. And you can see what has happened is we multiplied that 10 by 2, which gives us 20. And we multiplied the 5 with 2, and that gave me 10. Right, that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you in the next one.